Greetings, welcome to the first version of our integrated circular city system in virtual reality. I'm presently in Unreal Engine 4. I also have another video of this city at real world scale. Wow, there's thunder in the background here in the real world. But uh, in the virtual world here, I'm in Unreal Engine 4. And as I was saying, I created another version of this city in Autodesk Stingray. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, I was having a few crashing issues with Unity. CryEngine, the city that we created the first version of, uh, but is no longer available. I've also been having some issues with, but I hope to put this city in Amazon's lumberyard in the not too distant future and work with that. Uh, there are a few issues like getting um, it to work with uh, the version of 3ds Max that I have, but hopefully we can solve that in the not too distant future. So here's the city modeled out in 3ds Max. Uh, yeah, I didn't do all the modeling. Some of the some of the models here are open source models that I've accessed and are specifically for Unreal Engine 4. Now, the first thing that I'd like to discuss is level of detail. So I'm with the HTC Vive presently. It optimi it's optimized for 90 FPS or frame per second frame rate. Uh, I'm getting here uh, looking out over the city approximately 60 frames per second. Now, I haven't modeled and duplicated everything I have out into the city because that would lower the frame rate quite significantly. So the city isn't as well developed. You, know, you see kind of trees sparsely placed around in, if this was the city in real life, we would obviously have a lot more vegetation and a lot more trees around the city. Uh, but in order to keep the frame rate high, I've placed fewer trees around the city and a lot less vegetation. Now, the first thing I would like to discuss is level of detail. So you see in front of me the building there and the trees, they kind of look planar or they are planar to a great extent. So level of detail is a game engine term that refers to replacing uh, lower quality meshes or higher quality meshes with the opposite, the closer you get to the object. So the closer you get to the object, the object, so for example, this tree right here, the closer my uh, visual field gets to the object, object, the engine will render and replace this mesh with a higher quality mesh. So I'll just, that's what level of detail refers to. Level of detail or LOD zero is the highest quality mesh possible. So as I get closer to this object, you'll notice it change into a more detailed mesh. So there we go. The change has just occurred. That's from LOD probably three or four to LOD two or three. Then there we go. An even higher quality mesh and then an even higher quality mesh. And now I'm at the clipping mass, so I'm, I'm so close that the camera on my visual field is actually clipping in to the mesh itself. So that's the highest detail we can get. And now you see lower detail, even lower detail mesh, and then a planar mesh. So right now you're seeing a basically, a, you know, a plane. The mesh is a single plane and there's texture uh, represented on both sides. So you can see the texture on this side and I'll move over here and you can see the texture represented. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's thunder in the background. Hopefully my power doesn't go out. Anyway, uh, over here we have another mesh and this is the lowest level of detail. So uh, it's keeping the frame rate high because it's displaying an, a very low detail mesh. And that's the case with all of the meshes you see in the background. Uh, they are all at a higher LOD. You can kind of see them broken up. Those two buildings there are somewhat broken up. But if I get closer to the building, it displays a higher quality mesh. There you go. You can see the and the closest we get, we're clipping it a bit there, but now it's displaying the highest detail mesh possible. Farther away I go, it'll display a lower detail mesh. Now it does this in order to save on memory and processing power. So if I was to process all of the models you see here at the highest detail of mesh right, right now, then my frame rate would probably drop pretty significantly. Uh, the HTC Vive, as I mentioned, operates best at 90 frames per second. Right now I'm getting it about 60 frames per second. If all of the buildings were presenting a high detailed mesh at this very moment, the frame rate would probably drop even further. So the great thing about Unreal Engine 4 is that it creates these level of detail meshes for you. You put you you import the highest level of detail mesh and it will create lower level of detail meshes for you from that. You can also do that with an outside uh, outside application like Simply Gone, which used to they used to charge for, but is 
is now uh, provided free, and you can create sequentially lower detail level of levels of mesh. In Autodesk Stingray, you can't do it automatically, but in Unreal Engine 4, you're capable of creating these low level of detail meshes automatically, which is great. So here's the city. You can see it's a concentric circular city, starting with the central area and concentric circles moving outward. Here we have one radial sector. The city is divided into radial sectors and circular belts. Here we have one circular, then we have two circulars all the way around, three circulars, four circulars. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but there's a lot of thunder. I don't know if there's lightning, but there certainly is a lot of thunder. Anyway, here's the central area of the city. We have uh, one, two buildings. Here we have the intersystem rail, the, the, the intercity rail transportation system. So, and here we have uh, a, um, you know, a train and the train goes all the way to that end. And then I have another one, which you should see popping out here uh, in a moment. Okay, oh, there we go. Yep, so the train, this train will go to the end and the other train going in the opposite direction will go to the end and then come back. And uh, so this is animation that I've created in, um, yeah, I think I created in, in Unreal Engine, but you can also create animation in 3ds Max and then import it into Unreal Engine, or you can create the animation in Unreal Engine. So for example, the animation you see right here, this is this vehicle right here is part of the personal rapid transportation system, and I've just created this very simple animation. The, the vehicle's just rotating here. Let me get closer to it, and you can, you can hopefully see the, uh, the rotation of this uh, PRT vehicle. So the term PRT is an acronym for Personal Rapid Transportation. This is a walking garden city configuration. I expect that most people in the city will choose to walk or bicycle or use some other form of personal transportation. But in, in the case of people who choose not to walk, and who need uh, automated, uh, an automated vehicle service, uh, there is a personal rapid transportation system here in the city for those people who, uh, for one reason or another, need to, uh, you know, need that sort of service. And here we go, we, here we have some more animation, and I don't know if you can see that, but the doors on this vehicle, for me it's kind of blurry, it might not be as blurry for you, but the doors on this vehicle are opening and closing. Yeah, so part of the personal rapid transportation system, the PRT system. So again, this city has concentric circles. In the Oravana project design specifications, we have also city layouts with concentric circles. Most of the cities in community are likely to be circular cities because the circular nature of these cities allows for the most efficient resource, efficient use of material resources. But I expect that in community there will be linear cities and square cities. It's just the circular city is uh, provides for the most efficient use of material resources. So we have a radial sector, and each radial sector, of which there are eight radial sectors here, if you look around the city, is divided by a radial pathway. So we have eight primary radial pathways. This radial pathway extending to that direction houses above it the the uh, intercity mass rapid transportation system of which there are two tracks and so there are only two ingress egress points to the city one over there and one over there some cities might have three ingress egress points and some cities might have four but I expect mo most to have anywhere from two to four and this city has two uh, so both two tracks and two ingress egress points now, at the center of the city, we have a common access, but we have two common access buildings. Here, let me uh, jump. Right, so with the uh, with Unreal Engine 4 and the default virtual reality template, you get, uh, you get these two hands, and on both controllers, you get jumpers. So I can jump forward. Uh, let me jump not too far. There we go. Okay, so, yep two hands and uh, two teleporters or jumpers. Great, and this is the central area. Uh, again, there are LODs, so the closer I get to this, uh, 
the higher quality of mesh is rendered by the engine, lower quality of mesh rendered by the engine. Now, so this is the central area. Sometimes, depending on uh, context and designation, this is known as C1. Sometimes it's known as C0, uh, circular zero. So these right here are referred to as circulars or circular belts, and each circular is divided by a, uh, a circular pathway. So here we have water management, including fountains and pools. The next circular out, we have a, in this city configuration, again, in, you know, there, there will be a whole host of different city configurations depending upon culture and geographic location and uh, choice of optimization in, in terms of material resources and, and needs, wants, and preferences by the individuals living in the city. But, you know, I've just created this city because this is sort of the buildings I had and this was simple and easy for me to create. But uh, in the future, I'm sure we'll create a wide variety of other different types and configurations of circular city system. And, and you know, we're not fixed to the architecture. We can use a variety of different architectures uh, but and, and cultures will have a variety of different architectures. It's just that uh, these are the architectural the types that I've you know that I was kind of attracted to and decided to construct in 3ds Max and then import into the game engine. And this was a very easy circular city to work with. So. Yeah, so this is what I started with. Anyway, the next circular out is the same all the way around. It's supposed to be a, or you could imagine that it's a permacultural walking garden. So here we have paths and uh, here we have the border. And you can imagine a whole host of trees and a whole host of uh, permacultural gardens, places for quiet contemplation or places for walking and the cultivation of food. Here we have planters and these are located along the primary pathways of the city. You can also see them located here and here along the primary pathways. So here, down there, and I've basically just taken these planters uh, and then just duplicated them around the city. So they're placed on each of the primary pathways of the city. Now, some of these objects you can pick up, again, this at the, uh, the, the lowest level of detail is a simple plane, right? And the closer you get, the, the engine re renders a higher level of detail mesh, even a higher level, and the highest level of detail mesh is rendered right there. And then as I bring it toward my face, the camera that acts as my, you know, as it acts as my face begins clipping into the mesh. Now, because it's a plane, I, it's not going to stand up. So it's just going to fall right over. There's, you know, it's not going to stand up. Now, some of the objects, uh, yeah, that's okay. That's a bit weird, but right. Uh, some of the, you can pick up most of the objects. So again, you know, as I bring this closer to my face, it renders an even higher quality mesh, and then I can drop it. So you can interact with a lot of the objects in here, uh, but not all, I haven't made all of the objects interactable. For example, this is unbalanced, and the trunk right, oh, the trunk right here is so small that if I put this back down, it's just gonna fall right over. Uh, there are trees that you can pick up and that will uh, will drop and are balanced. This, for example, this is uh, this pine tree right here. If I drop that, you know, it is balanced and the trunk right here, I'm pointing to it with my thumb, is large enough for it to uh, be balanced such that you can drop it and it will remain upright. Not all of the vegetation will remain upright in that sense. As you can see here, the palm tree, this palm tree I can't place upright again. Yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, the buildings. Yeah, okay, so the next circular out is the inter-system operations circular and most of the buildings you can pick up. So you can pick up this building, this book building. The great thing about Unreal Engine 4 is it makes this very easy. So does, uh, so does Autodesk Stingray. So I can pick up both of the buildings at the same time and I can change their orientation. Yep, and th when I place them down, they're placed slightly above the, we could call this the terrain, but this isn't actually terrain that I've created in, uh, or that I've created via Unreal Engine. This is a mesh that I imported. So you can see the, it ends at the, at the uh, edge over there. It's not terrain that's actually been created in, in Unreal Engine 4. It is a mesh that I've been imported. So we can change the orientation of these buildings. Let's just change them back to the way they were. Great, so I'm gonna walk around this uh, inter-system uh, operation 
sector. Now, a lot of these buildings are intended for inter-system operation activities and tasks, but there are so, there's so much space here that they could also be used when available for a wide variety of other activities. Here we have a pagoda. You can pick up that pagoda. Now this, I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with, um, with 3D modeling animation. I, I assume that some of you will be and some of you won't, but right here, this is a single plane and uh, if you look this way, you can see inside the building and that plane is not being rendered with any sort of texture because there's no need to render a texture on that plane since that plane will always, because this architecture is intended to be placed like this, it will always be uh, positioned like this and therefore there's no need to render the, um, the texture on the underneath side, it'll just take up memory for no purpose. So that's not rendering, but I can, you know, I can bring this up and you, you can see this building at a larger scale in the, the video I've created in uh, Autodesk Stingray. You can see the vines right here and then the tiled texture right here. And how close can we get without the, yeah, so you can see the clipping right here of the camera with the mesh. Okay, so I can put this back down. Let's continue around here. Yeah, this is a, a utility service dome and I'll put that back down again. This is the lowest level of detail mesh and the closer I get the mesh changes to a higher level of detail mesh. How close, so. Yeah, you have to get really close to this building in order for the highest level of detail mesh to appear. I don't know. There we go. Now, now, even with me clipping, finally with me clipping, now the highest level of detail mesh appears. So here we have another building. Pick up that building. And in fact, let me just put that on top of there. You can actually pick up the platforms, which are separate. I don't know if that's the best idea, uh, whether or not the platforms should be separate from the buildings, but we can, can always attach them to the buildings so that when we interact with them, the building actually plays up, picks up the platform or first or zero floor when we do so. Agreed. So let's continue around inter-system operations sec, uh, circular. So what I've done is I've basically created one uh, segment. I've created two segments and then you can see I've duplicated them around. So these two segments, this segment, uh, this segment of this uh, circular is the same as that one over there and this is the same as that one over there. That's the same as this. So I've essentially just duplicated them around. Now here we have aircraft landing pad. So you can imagine that these might be medical buildings or other buildings. We don't need aircraft landing pads all over the place. It's just that this building, this architecture that I've created has, has this. In case of an emergency, a quadcopter could pick someone up that's uh, injured, an organism that's injured within the city, uh, place them here, and then medical emergent, uh, high-tech emergency medical services could wheel them in. These could also be rehabilitation. You can, you know, the water, the, the pools here could be for rehabilitation. So these could be medical buildings or they could function for other buildings. This la aircraft landing pad could be removed if we choose to. So I'm not gonna continue around the city in this circular belt because as I've mentioned, I've essentially duplicated the circular belt around. Let me turn this way so the cable that I'm attached to with the virtual reality system doesn't wrap around my head. Okay, anything else to describe here? Yeah, uh, the planters, some of the planters you can pick up. Uh, again, I haven't attached the tree to this planter, so when we pick this planter up, as you can see here, uh, and I put it back down, the tree, yep, sometimes that happens. I have to drop it. Yep, okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I, I, in the future, I imagine we would attach the tree to the planter so the whole, uh, the whole system would move together as one. Now the next belt out, uh, first we have a pathway with planters and the next belt out is the recreational belt. I'll walk around this belt because there are some unique elements to this belt. Here we have an outdoor pool. Uh, I could actually, I don't know if I can pick this up if I made this interactable, but you know, these courts here, these tennis courts, we can pick up. So I could change the orientation of these courts. One, two, let's place that court there and this court here. Yeah, most of the architecture in the city I've made so that we can interact with. Uh, you know, we could reposition these, maybe put more court, potentially put more courts here. Uh, this tree you can interact with, but unfortunately this tree is not balanced. So if I was to put this tree down, it's just gonna topple over. So in order to get objects to uh, remain upright, they need to be balanced and this tree is not balanced. I'm gonna put this tree over here. 
Okay, now uh, this is supposed to be a natural pond. Unfortunately, this sand texture is not appearing correctly. I don't know why it's not appearing correctly. When I bake it, it tends to appear like that. Maybe you can help me out with this. Uh, but yeah, you can actually pick up these arches and put them back. Pick up the arch like that. And again, when you put the objects back, they rest slightly above the, uh, the mesh here, just as an indication. Actually, it's, it's easier to do that because of collision, but uh, it also indicates that they've been moved from their original static place. So I'm gonna jump over here and continue on around the sector. Here's an indoor pool. Again, as we get closer to this mesh, you see a higher level of detail emerge. I'm gonna pick up this and here's the pool you see with the slide. Now I'm gonna put this back down. It's gonna rest slightly above. There we go. Here are some uh, common access buildings in the recreational area. Again, you can pick up the tree, down, pick up the tree. You could reposition these trees, put one there, put one there, They're colliding with one another and moving them. Okay, yeah, I could pick up these uh, these archways. I'm not gonna go going to, but again, this should be sand. Yeah, wherever the sand is, it doesn't appear to render correctly. So these are supposed to be sand courts, sand volleyball courts, although I realize that the net should probably be higher, but we could do that easily in the future. Uh, pick up these, and these are both balanced and uh, the uh, bottom of them is sufficiently designed such that when you place it, it stands upright. You could always place it like that, but you know, I'll just choose to leave them like that. Here we have some uh, pagoda shades. You could pick up these, put it back down. You could reposition. Oh, I just picked up the platform underneath. Reposition that. Yep. Reposition this. Okay, as we continue around here, we have a sports field with a couple of the arch pagodas. So yeah, you could reposition that there, reposition that there. Maybe reposition this here and here. All right, here we have a solar tent. So this operates as a shaded tent, uh, but also it has a solar panel on top. Here we have uh, common recreational access buildings for various sporting or recreational activities. Some more of these we could, Reposition that, reposition that, maybe, oh, we picked up the, um, there we, go. Right, we could put that there, and uh, yeah, we could put that there, and then let me pick them up together and place it there, okay. If we keep going around, more solar tents, and we have this building, pick that building up, common recreational access building, that's oh, kind of high above the, okay. Well, regardless, here's uh, the inter-system uh, intercity train, here are those pagodas. This has just been scaled outward. Yeah, I can't, uh, in virtual reality, you can't yet grab them and scale in any direction you like, but I'm sure that in the future, Oh, or you could, we could probably, I'm sure, program that into Unreal Engine 4, but that hasn't been programmed in yet. So here's the arch, pagoda archway that you saw over there. It's just been scaled in a uh, different direction. So several of those. Outdoor pool, again, outdoor natural pond, indoor swimming pool, and then it just duplicates around a sports field, uh, some common access recreational buildings, uh, yeah, an archway for sports, and then some other common access recreational buildings. Again, pick things up, put them down, you can pick this up, change the orientation, maybe you want this here and this here. Okay, let's put that there and that there. Maybe you want this oriented this direction, and this one, which is a bit smaller, oriented in that direction. Great, and uh, yeah, we can pick that up. Pick the solar tents up, pick the pagodas up. Uh, yeah, we can even pick some of the planters up. So I'm gonna drop that. It might rock a bit until it finds, uh, yeah, that's because of collision that happens sometimes. So uh, let's see if we can put it, okay. Oh yeah, here are bicycles. Let me try and get, I don't know if I can get this to remain static. This is due to some oddities with collision in Unreal Engine. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, and so here are some bicycles. There we go, I don't know if you can see that. The bicycles are also planar, so when I pick them up and try and put them down again, they're gonna turn on their side. So let me just show you, I don't know if you can see that, but there's one bicycle and there is a second bicycle. Okay, so we're done with the recreational belt. As we move outward, we move to the low density dwelling belt. Again, these trees are also, you can see the planar nature of that tree and this tree I'm, uh, 
closer to, and so it's rendering a higher quality mesh. Again, the closer I get, even higher quality mesh as I move farther out, it renders a planar mesh, which takes up less processing power and memory. So here we have the low density dwelling belt. Uh, these are low density personal dwelling homes, of which there are eight, therefore 16 per path, per uh, radial pathway. So eight here, eight here, 16. So we have a total of 48 per radial sector. Therefore, we have a total of eight radial sectors. So 384 low density dwellings for this whole city. Uh, yeah, a variety of different homes. Again, these are just uh, models that I modeled out. I'll show you each individual building uh, a little later in this video. Here are some common access buildings in the low density dwelling belt. Um, each belt has a core function, but remember each belt also has secondary and tertiary functions. And so these are common access buildings uh, in the low density dwelling belt. Here are some ponds in the low density dwelling belt. These are uh, intended to be clumps of, clumps of grass and and flower, but I've just kind of placed them around in a scattered manner. Uh, it's kind of difficult to, if I had put a lot of vegetation here on the surface of this mesh, it would drop the frame rate uh, significantly. So I, you know, I haven't, I haven't put vegetation across this entire mesh, but we could do that and then create a cinematic video from it. Uh, and uh, cinematics is sort of separate from virtual reality. So you can actually populate this city with a lot of different meshes and then create a cinematics video and that won't, it won't impact the frame rate. But when you're dealing with virtual reality, as I have a virtual reality headset on now and system I'm using at the present point in time, then frame rate is a factor. So when you're creating cinematics, it's not much of a factor, but when you're, when you're working in virtual reality, it is. In the future, I'll create a cinematics video where this is, you know, this is popular, we can do it together, this is where this is populated with a lot of vegetation. The next circular we come to is the high density dwelling belt. So this is a high density dwelling uh, apartment building. There are 14 apartments per apartment building, uh, and there are three apartment buildings per radial sector and eight radial sectors. So we have 14 apartment building, excuse, did I say 14? There are actually 28 apartment buildings per uh, tower. So 14 on this side and 14 on this side, not counting these, this space and this space, which are common access spaces. And so we have two here, two here, two here, here to here. I haven't put a separator in between here. We can actually look in. You can see there's no separator, but you can imagine that this would be two apartment apartments. So one here and one here with a separator in between. Yeah, you can actually look inside the, the building and we can go downward and then upward. You can see the solar panels on top even there some solar panels. Yeah, so there are 28 apartments per building. There are three buildings per radial sector for a total of 84, and then eight radial sectors for a total of 672, I think. So the uh, the total number of occupants, well, I should mention one other thing I, before I mention the total number of occupants for the city. Now, I haven't modeled out any dwellings closer to the edge of the city in the circular symbiotic farming area, but I imagine that in a city like this, where there are low density dwellings, high density dwellings, there would also be some sort of moderate density dwellings, sort of condo buildings with anywhere from, I don't know, uh, three to, to six condos kind of located at the boundary there between the circular symbiotic farm and where we allow nature to return to its wild state. There would probably be a few buildings there for people who preferred that sort of dwelling area where there were about four to six uh, families within any given apartment and it's closer to nature but farther away from all of the space in the inside of the city. So anyway, regardless of that, if there was one occupant 
per dwelling, given both the low density and uh, high density space, there would be, what? let's see, 1,056 occupants. Now, I imagine that there wouldn't just be one occupant per dwelling, there'd be anywhere from you know one to four occupants. If there were four occupants per dwelling, the total occupancy would be 4,224 occupants. And again, you can pick up these buildings and reposition these buildings any way you like. Yeah, I mean, we could even take a, take some of these buildings away and, uh, you know, if possible, and if that's what the population desired, uh, let's see if I can, there we go, we could pick up this, and we could even have apartment dwellings here. And you can imagine an uh, apartment dwelling here also, and an apartment, apartment dwelling here. So yeah, these apartment dwellings, I'll just put this back and then put this back right here. Okay, and uh, see if I can grab that and put this back. Woo, it's a hot bit of architecture. Oh, that dropped underneath. Can I pick it up from the floor? Yep, pick it up from the floor. Oop. That's a hot bit of architecture right there. It's a hot bit of architecture. <laughs> okay, I'll put that back there. And that back there. Yeah, um, yeah, the great thing about working in virtual reality, there is the sun. So not only can we model out the entire city and you can see your own personal dwelling and you can orientate it in virtual reality however you like, you can modify it, uh, but you can also see shadows. So you can see how the sun will affect different buildings and the position and orientation of those buildings. It's, I mean, you, we can basically replicate any, any, uh, anything we can do in, ver in real life in here in in a miniaturized simulated version of the city that we desire to create. We can simulate out our ideas, we can test our designs, and we can come to a more optimized design together. You have access to all of these buildings and can play around with, uh, with these buildings in the city. Just go to our GitHub page, and uh, yeah, you should be able to download or uh, fork any of um, you know any of the content we have there. So the next sector out uh, here, we have a solar tent. Yeah, these trees you can pick up, and they are balanced, so you can put them back as you'd like. Here we have the first water channel, and here we have the greenhouse channel. And if I get close to these, you'll see they're palm trees, and they, you know, the closer we get, the higher the me higher quality meshes rendered, farther away we get, more planar. So this is uh, this right here I presume would be a greenhouse with an algae bioreactor on top. Similar design to this, except the algae bioreactor is somewhat taller. So this, th again, this circular belt would have beautiful walking gar gardens, you could imagine, and uh, beautiful contemplation places, and people could bicycle and walk around this. And the greenhouses would have a combination of manual and automation services, so. Yeah, okay, the next, uh, the next uh, channel we come to is the secondary water channel, then we have a large pathway here, and then we come to the circular symbiotic farming circular, which extends all the way around. And again, a lot of these I've just duplicated around. That's the great thing about a circular city. You can develop one radial sector and then you basically duplicate it around the city. So it's extremely efficient and you, you mod might modify a couple of the buildings and uh, the environment just slightly, the terrain just slightly. Uh, given natural geographic issues and barriers, but you'd work around those. So it would be generally be circular in nature. Now, the, uh, the agricultural zone, which could be here or could in fact be at the edge of the city there, I haven't modeled out, but you would imagine that surrounding the city this way would be an agricultural belt where we grow various materials for food cultivation and textiles. Now, uh, this is meant to be the circular symbiotic farming belt, so we move a variety of different animals around in an iterative and organized manner and grass would be growing here and there would also be a lot of trees and orchards so we'd have trees orchards animals and we'd be able to cultivate a variety of different uh, materials and um, products as um, uh, food, food products as well so here we have cattle yeah I don't know if you could see that but there's uh, there's some cattle over here we have uh, yeah, more cattle right here. Let me put that down. And then that's probably too small for you to see and uh, definitely too small for me to see, but we have 
right here. Uh, we have roosters, then we have a pig, and depending upon the, uh, the geographic location and the culture of the individuals in the city would depend upon what is uh, being produced. Of course, it, it needs to resonate with the circular symbiotic farming nature of the city, but here we have some goats and here we have a ram. Of course, the animals would depend upon the, you know, where the city is located in the geographic area. Over here, we have a solar farm and then a, so, a few solar spheres. The solar spheres concentrate solar energy onto a solar receiver. And here we have, they're not, I can't pick them up. Oh, what was, the, oh, that, okay, I'll show you that in one moment. Uh, is it still in place? Yeah, it's still in place. Okay, uh, so I don't know if you saw that, but I'll show you then just in one, mo one moment. So here we have a solar um, a variety of different solar panels. These might be located in the city or outside the city. The great thing about working in virtual reality is we can see where the sun is heading and we can also make these mobile. So we can simulate, simulate out every aspect of the city. Here is the ingress egress point that in the Autodesk Stingray video I showed you was here, but again, as I mentioned, it would probably be located at the uh, the edge or boundary of the city. So in this uh, miniaturized version of the city, I've placed it here. So here you can see the ingress egress point. Uh, again, not a lot of Z fighting, even though this track is overlapping the track on the building. Now, is the train coming back toward us at the moment? It's not. Okay, so here we have a, a wind farm. We have wind turbines. Quality is quite, quite good. Yep. Okay, again, in a real city, duh, you know, we may or may not have these this form of wind turbine. We definitely wouldn't want it located this close to the city because it, these this type of wind turbine, this sort of technology creates a low vibratory hum that can be somewhat disturbing to various organisms. So we'd want to probably want to place this outside the city. And again, depending upon geographic location, wind not, might not be a, a viable electrical power generating source. So depending upon the city, there could be a variety, we could have a variety of different technologies or select different technologies depending upon geographic location. Over here, is a sports stadium. And as you saw back there, it was uh, rendering a low quality mesh. Now I'm up close. It's rendering a much higher quality mesh. And I can actually pick this up, this building up. And so we can reposition it in various ways. And I can pick this up. And you know, if we don't want it here, maybe we, it's gonna begin knocking into, yep, it's knocking into the trees. So I could position it there, we could position that there. Yeah, and so this is meant to be a sports dome. So again, you could have other buildings and recreational activities here in the circular symbiotic farming belt. Again, each belt has one core function, but there are also secondary and tertiary functions. So a secondary function might be uh, recreation and this building would function for recreation for this belt. Okay, um, I'm just gonna walk around the city briefly and kind of show, yeah, we can reposition buildings and uh, allow the sun to move across the, the sky during the day and watch how the shadows uh, progress and then redesign the building, the, the, the layout and grid of the city as such. So I'll just continue moving through. Ah, oh, there we go. Let me jump over here and we can watch the train come toward us. Um, here's the intercity inter rail system. All right. Yeah, and it'll go to the end of the city and then return. Great. Um, reposition this, reposition this, reposition that. Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, the great thing about this is you can, you know, if you're living in a low density dwelling at least, you can uh, pick out the dwelling that you'd like and then position it however you'd like and you can see how you know the sun will affect it and the other objects around it will affect it and you know it, it allows for vast customization pick out the dwelling you like the location and uh, the orientation of the dwelling and see it all in virtual reality okay over here that's the flower of life, flower of life. Over here we have most of the buildings that you see in the city and uh, they can all be picked up. Here's the central building. I'll pick that up, put that down. Here are some of the other, this is the, the two inter, uh, inter system operations circular belt. This is the one of the buildings on that belt, three floors. That's a four floor version. 
So you can pick this up, put that down, knock it into the, some of the buildings I've already interacted with. Yep, you can look in, let me hold this right here so it doesn't move too much. You can look inside the building. Again, inside the building this way, look around. There we go. You can see I kind of like the gold color, so I've made a lot of that gold. And the swimming pool, uh, sports recreation dome, uh, another big building over there. Ah, here's the swimming area that I've modeled out. Oh, you can pick that up. Again, uh, face culling, back face culling's on. So drop that. All right, so the great thing is we could pick up, you know, one of these buildings, Let's pick up this building right here. Yeah, here's the, uh, the greenhouse with the, you know, the algae bioreactor. Uh, let's pick up, this is a common access building. Again, we get close and it renders the highest level of detail. So I have this building here, go back over here and uh, maybe I'll place it. Are there any empty spots? I don't see any empty spots. Well, whatever. Uh, okay, pick that up, take that building, throw it out. Right there. And then drop that there. Put this here, put that there. Yeah, I mean, the great thing is you can go over there and pick out additional buildings. You can look at all the buildings available. Anything else to show you in this video? Yeah, I'm just gonna drop below the mesh terrain here and show you what's directly under this terrain. So right under the terrain here, we have the pipe distribution grid. So you can see the four pipes. These are more well described in the Autodesk Stingray video, but this is what it looks like directly underneath the terrain. Here, I'll drop onto the floor. And uh, so that's what the city looks like from the bottom up. And here, we have the four pipes that I was describing, four pipes over here. Let me just jump over here. Here, two pipes and another two pipes. Okay, 